Hey folks, it's Brian. We just got done playing RQG, my Stranger in Strange Lands campaign. This chapter is called Darkness at Roomgate. And if that sounds familiar to you, spoilers, <laughs> we're going through <clears throat> the convention scenario, Darkness at Roomgate. So if you plan on going through that, um, <clears throat> lots of stuff will be given away. So, um, we started the session with uh, a whole bunch of admin because we got two new pl two players playing new characters, and um, one of them is a shaman, and shamans are complex to begin with, right? And um, <clears throat> so, I actually got online with this player a half hour before game time to actually go through the whole fetch piece, right? Uh, going through you know the cave meeting the bad man and all that stuff and doing the whole taboo and and um, shamanic abilities peace and it talks about in the spirit combat for that event that you have the two powers together. But I recall somewhere about spirit combat, attack and defense, the shaman being able to add his fetch's power to it. But the verbiage that I found says you add it for power versus power contests. So we're going to do a bunch of digging into all of this to, to, to try to figure it out for ourselves how we're going to run this. But anyway, it's because we went through and, and the uh, the bad man won once and they tied four times and then no, there's two. The shaman won once. We, we went full six rounds. But the, all the rest were tied um, except for the last one where where he failed, and so he ends up with one taboo and two abilities, as I recall. No, there's two taboos. Two taboos and two abilities. Uh, the two taboos to be celibate during uh, storm season and to wear no armor. And uh, two abilities, we had discussed a handful of different things where we were while we were discussing things. And then um, after the game actually started and we had you know the rest of the players there, there was some more discussion about this kind of stuff because he was asking them, what do you guys think? Has anybody ever played a shaman before? What do you think are good abilities? That kind of stuff. And one of the players um, convinced him to go with the, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's where you can increase the species power by one, but to do it twice. So it increases species max for power from 21 to 23, which obviously makes it easier to make power increase rolls and increases the total power you could have. Um, we also had a discussion about, okay, how much power do you want to sacrifice to the fetch to begin with, right? And there's like, you need to have a sweet spot for the, the shaman, right? Where it's not so high that, you, that you're not giving enough magic points or power points over, but not so low that your ability to use spirit magic and other power-based things is not very high either. Um, and as we talked through that and did some refinements, it's kind of like, well, you want to give as much power as you can to the fetch initially, right? So it's got some power. But you don't want to lower your own power to a point where you're crippled as well. Uh, so it's like somewhere between the sweet pot spot of 14, 15, and you know, half of your power. But that half of your power, you really don't want to get below 12, is 60% is about as low as you want to get for casting spirit magic anyway, right? So we did some massaging of numbers, and he sent six over because he had gotten up to 18 power with um, his character generation plus the two years of uh, uh, previous experience that we, that we ran. So he sent six points over to the fetch. He got a critical success on his spirit dance. So the, the fetch got... You know, two d six extra power, but it was only five points. So he's got an eleven power, and he gets a three d six plus 
six charisma but that turned out to be just like 11 so even with a critically sim somewhat moderate kind of thing so um more admin type discussion stuff going on so the the video recording the live play by the way is in the description um isn't all that long as as my as my sessions tend to be we try to do 8 30 to midnight that's what three and a half hours and I haven't even looked to see how long this one is, but <clears throat> it was what it was. And um, we took a break in the middle and had a bunch of more admin discussions where I didn't bother recording any of that. Um, and so we discussed, okay, a little back, backfill, okay. This happened on this day where uh, Arestra went to see the queen the day after the trolls attacked. Um, to discuss those things. Um, they come into town. Where is everybody? What's going on? Um, the uh, funeral mob bringing uh, Angry Large Body in, dragging the trolls, some people being sick, calling in the Shalana Roy priestesses, healing disease. Um, uh, Queen Leica sent word to the local shaman to get some assistance for the party to um, go and deal with, you know, they've heard about some kind of plague or something in in, in uh, Runegate, and these trolls, the players are saying, came from Runegate, and they've got disease, and so, hey, maybe there's something going on here. Do you have something to fight disease kind of thing? <coughs> and somewhere in, I could have sworn it was Kingdom of Sartar in the Hero Quest books, we talked about there being a shaman outside Clearwine who's a baboon. Uh, but I could not find that for the life of me. And anything that I've, I've got... Now, I didn't search... I didn't do a wild search. I just was searching just in the hero quest kind of stuff. Couldn't find out who it was because I was going to say, Hey, this was your shaman while you were being an assistant shaman. And now you're a journeyman shaman, right? So let's send you to help this party, get you some experience, and you know, go on your way. Uh, so uh, Miriam is her name. Miriam Sunbear or Yellow Bear. So uh, she's been sent to the Queen. The party's up with the Queen. Put the two together. Okay, who's going to be the new leader? Because Engrilar, who was the party leader because he was a noble, is no longer here. And so there's some discussion about ore rate and charisma. And um, it kind of focused back into or over to Devin uh, to be the new party leader, the voice kind of thing. So. Some interaction there, um, and then there's some discussion about the new map. I got the map that came with the starter, start the, the starter set, <laughs> the RuneQuest starter set box, and um, that, that style of map. And so the, um, not the legend, the legend's different because it's you know, a different format for the map itself. But the distances between places and the ways to get to different places is, again, different than anything I've used before. So it looks like places will be closer together now. So I actually, I pulled the string out so I can run. You know, I used to do, you know, Marine Corps um, map and compass stuff. So <clears throat> following along, okay, so many miles on and, and yeah i use miles not the kilometers so many miles on the caravan road so many miles on the the trail it's dark season there's rain you know bad weather that kind of stuff so it's gonna take them two days uh to get up to uh, i was gonna have them go to shoot i don't have my map out um not apple lane but the village just up from there and when the player says oh well, why don't we stay at apple lane instead so there's a big discussion sidebar on Apple Lane, and so we they went to Apple Lane, and um, I've because I haven't run any of my players through any of the old stuff. I'm pulling the old, you know, um, shoot, drawn blank on his name, but the pawn shop Gringle Gringle's pawn shop is still there. It has not been destroyed yet. So I'm gonna have Gringle doing his thing. Um, for the party there. So they go to the tin inn and they they run into a Quack John. Yeah, Quack John, right? 
Quack John there, who you know, who are these people? Adventurers, tell me stories. With you know, what's going on, that kind of stuff. So that'll lead into if they ever come back through. Hey, get, these guys know what they're doing, you know, that kind of stuff. So there's a hook. <laughs> so I've got like three different scenarios we can do out of uh, Apple Lane as we go through Apple Lane, Return to Apple Lane, and this other thing, right? Freeing Apple Lane or defending Apple Lane kind of deal. So I've got three scenarios we could pull into. To um, and now. There's the uh, the Rainbow Mounds from the the Johnstown section of the the starter set, right? So we've got a bunch of stuff we could do, or that's going to be happening around through that, right? But anyway, so they spend the night there, and then they hit uh, Rune Gate early afternoon. Uh, they get there. There's a whole confrontation at the gate deal. Um, Dave and actually recognizes Severos as being um, Veranos' son. There's a little discussion up for oh, Queen Laika. So obviously she wants to go, what's going on at Runegate? First, the whole, well, what's the mom going with the disease stuff and what's going on with this? The other thing is, how come he hasn't come talk to me, you know, bent the knee kind of thing? Um, maybe he's trying to, you know, be an, an independent. We need to find out what's going on there. So that's kind of the underlying, the, okay, the party's going to help, but find out what's going on. <laughs> As well while they're there. Um, so they get there. Nobody makes any of the rolls out front. Because there's the brew tracks. But does that make any sense? How are the brew going to walk into town? They're not. Right? <laughs> Close the gates at night. Right? You got guards out during the day. You're going to have guards out at night. Um, so. But I, you know, I figured. Between having people inside and people outside the brew. On that side maybe throwing the fetches over. Kind of the the fetishes fetishes over kind of thing maybe so there might be some stuff plus i have uh input you know the baboons are in this area too right and they're watching what's going on and they're, they're and so that will play in later so uh the party gets in there the whole setup uh severos comes up he's all cock and poppy and poppy cocky uh What's the word? Peacocky. There we go. Uh, strutting and that kind of thing. And starts asking him who they are. What are they doing here? And guard comes running up. Savros, Savros. You've got to come quick. Come quick. I'm done with you yet. Come with me. And so everybody goes through town. People wailing. Now they see the fires. Some of them, They saw the smoke earlier, but couldn't figure anything out. But they have yeah, this fires, gray ash everywhere. Um People wailing in front of the, the Lightbringer's Temple. They go inside. The mud and blood everywhere. Awful. All, it's all nasty. Again, everybody's missing all kinds of search and scan rules and stuff. So they don't get any clues here. Um, but what was kind of cool and surprised me at first is um, the Shaman Dakafal. And I have no issue with ancestor worship throughout Dragon Pass. So it's kind of like the Old Testament... Um, uh, prophet versus the priests in town, kind of. That's the way I envision shamans. There's a prophet out in t out in the wilderness, kind of thing. The priests in town take care of doing stuff, but the prophet still has connections, right? But they all work together because everybody wants to have the blessings of the prophet, right? So, but he, he, she's a follower of Daka Fall, and uh, she took resurrection, the one use resurrection spell, and um, so they're talking about. Can we heal her up? Because she needs to have th heal up to three hit points in order to do the resurrection on her. And we can just resurrect her here. And somebody in the background is talking about, yeah, let's break this scenario. <laughs> so, uh, Arrestra's got heal body. That will heal up all of the damage and all the amputation and everything else going on, right? So, that would heal her all the way up. And then, you know, she's still dead though. And then we do the resurrect and we got the priestess back. Now, I'm thinking... Is she really going to know who killed her? She may be able to describe her, but she doesn't know who she is. Um, so, as far as I'm going, that would be cool. But then we started discussing about the fact that a three-point one-use spell means you lose those three rune points. They don't come back. They're gone. You erase them from your sheet. <laughs> Not just the spell, and then you sacrifice one rune point and get it back, right? No, it's those three rune points. Uh, so they uh, finally figured out oh, this maybe not be worth it. Um, and, oh, what, what it came down to was, and, you know, they kind of asked, hey, this is what we're thinking. And several go, yes, definitely do this. 
Um, and, but Arrestra was not able to uh, make her Earth Rune roll for her heal body spell. And so she's kind of thinking maybe this is a sign. And then I have several. So, oh, yeah, I guess, you know, she has gone her way. She's where she needs to be. Okay. We need to go talk to my father. And so they go off, talk to um, uh, Veranos and Miriam, Shaman, second sight. I actually ask her, do you want to turn? They hear the coffee in the background. They bring him out. He's obviously old. He looks like he's sick. Do you want to turn your second sight on? Sure. Yeah. Okay. And so they see the possession, but I also have a handful of spears. There was some kind of verbiage in the scenario text that got me thinking that there's more than one uh, disease spirit here. So there's just, you know, a handful. Turns out to be five. Uh, just flittering around it. I kind of had like a magnet, right? This body's got a disease spirit. So some just spirits around just kind of hanging out. Now, I could have played hard and said and, and thought, you know, my process is as soon as the disease spirit is pulled out, another one's going to jump right in. Because that's what disease spirits want to do, right? They want to possess bodies. They want to, you know, create more disease. Uh, but I had it more like just a magnet thing. When this was gone, throw some flutter away because I didn't want to spend so much time burning through magic points uh, trying to get all these spirits down, right? Um, so then there's this whole discussion about spirit combat and is it the fetch or the shaman and what spells can we do to buff either or? And uh, something I saw on, maybe it was the Discord, about uh, visibility that, a discorporate shaman needs to cast visibility to manifest in the material plane or the middle world, right? Um, in order to engage in spirit combat. Because normal spirits, same thing. they got to manifest before they can engage in spirit combat. Well, most spirits have that innately. A shaman doesn't. He's got to use the spell. Um, and this thing applies to a f the fetch unless the shaman, one of his abilities is to manifest fetch. So you know the fetch can't do it on his own anyway. And so it only makes sense that the shaman can't either. And so you got to cast visibility to do that. And so <clears throat> we let him shuffle some spell things because this is what he would have known because this was the f he was trying to do something that could deal this kind of stuff. <clears throat> so, okay, we cast visibility to manifest the fetch. Shaman casts um, glamour on himself and on the fetch. Glamour on himself, which increases his spirit combat skill percentage, which then becomes the spirit fetches spirit combat skill percentage because i was thinking initially that the fetch spirit combat spell skill would have been power times five like every other spirit no is the same as the shamans well that kind of, kind of makes some sense okay i mean I'll, I'll take that um but the fetch's combat dance spirit combat damage is based on its power and its charisma not the shamans so if they pass glamour on the the fetch then the fetch's charisma goes up and then it's Spirit combat damage should increase, and so it can do some more. So that's what they kind of figured out doing. And then they had um, spirit screen. They had, he has one point of spirit screen. Spirit screen. They cast on it to give him, you know, a point of power, point of armor, right? Then we engage in spirit combat. First round. Um, he got a special. The fetch got a special. And the disease spirit was regular. Disease spirit got regular successes the entire time. Um, but uh, the fetch got a special the first round. I think it was like fourth, fourth round. The other spirit is ties, right? And then, um, but you know, special does double damage. Two d six plus two. Dropped it from it was like a seventeen down to five. Um, and the second time it got. Well, the same time it was a regular six, but the the the, the uh, disease spirit got an automatic failure, 98. Um, so does damage enough to take it? No, he got a special. He did get a special. That's right. So he did enough damage to, to take it out completely. Well, when you do a special, you also do damage, <laughs> physical damage to the person. So the Veneros takes two points of damage um, to ramp part of the body. I didn't really care where. Um, and Arrestra is there, so she's casting... Uh, the heal two on him to take care of him, and because um, we want to, you know, keep the shaman's magic points as safe as possible. Uh, David has a has a spirit scroll, has a sp 
has a s stone with a magic point crystal or matrix magic point matrix i think it is it's not one of the actual magic crystals i don't think it's just a matrix so use those points to cast his spirit magic kind of stuff right so actually went pretty quick um uh, taking the body out i had their spirits disappear uh the fetch takes off after them to try and follow them but he misses he loses them and um then you know veronois is, is much better now <clears throat> then question and answer discussion kind of stuff veneros takes off some more discussion afterwards with uh, Severos. Okay, what exactly do you want us to do? You know, if we have to actually talk to people and have them do stuff, how do we know? How do we show them that we're here for you on your behalf? So he gives them these little badge things. And um, if they run into anything or find anything, get hold of the guard. The guard will be able to find Severos. And that's kind of where we ended the session. Uh, at that point, you know, they're told to go to the Last Chance Inn, I think it's called. Yeah, that kind of thing. So that's where we ended that session. Um, Time-wise, fairly long. Event-wise, fairly short. <laughs> but lots lots of new learning on everybody's part. So if you do watch the live play, there'll be lots of points where I'm looking through the book. <laughs> that doesn't quite make a lot of sense. I remember something different about that. Let's double-check things. and Yeah, we're going to have to do some more, more digging later on as well. Um, but, uh, this, having a shaman on board is, is worth gold in Glorantha. That's all I can say. Cause spirits are freaking everywhere. <laughs> Happy gaming.